I didn't know it was going to be you, so it's good to see you. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, because I had a, well, I'll, I'll get onto it later, but you, there was a very life affirming chat last time. You, you got a good aura about you. I remember I got off our chat and I just felt like I had a, a new lease of life that day. So I'm pleased. You know, I, can I say, I read, I read um, some of you know, the piece you've done and I had seen that that had affected you that way. And I think as these times move forward, you know, I, I think releasing the old ways of wondering, I wonder how this is going to turn out or it, it sort of leaves the room. And so I, I'm, I'm genuinely happy to see you. I feel like, you know, these, these virtual worlds can generate the early stages of friendship or, or, or like-mindedness. So it's good to see you, man. Yeah, that's good to hear. Good, yeah, uh, well, of course, today it's about a different, diff very different type of movie to The Lost Adjuster. <laughs> um, well, I, I was going to start by asking about just performing in the kind of gangster flick genre and kind of because it's something you, we've seen you do before. I mean, they're, they're films that are just incredibly cool to watch. You know, they're films that they're, they're, they seem, they've got a kind of swagger about them. Is it, do you get a lot of enjoyment from, from sort of entering into those worlds, even, albeit briefly? It's so nice to hear a journalist speak of these films with a sense of understanding and respect because you know any actor out there will tell you action is not easy also stoicism without losing humanity is also really hard i watch this movie i mean now i like i love acting i i i, I friendship within film is a glorious thing camaraderie in film is what gets these independent movies made and i mean i'm not retiring on these movies that's for sure i'm, I'm making movies primarily because i love doing it and so when you talk about their fun and their swagger, they are, they are movies to give the audience a moment to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to check out. And of course, that's not necessarily entirely feasible, but, you know, expel disbelief and all that good stuff. But it's fun that the camaraderie generated on some of these movies, the swagger movies and the fun, and the, is because you're always looking for that thing that feels like it's going to translate that way. The fights have to seem that they're within a real reason, but also we understand that the fights people enjoy them if they're done well so yeah the kind of movie is it's fun but nonetheless I need something to get my teeth into because if I don't have something to get my teeth into I find myself I'm starting as an actor to wonder why I'm doing it I'm not retiring from film but I'm definitely I've definitely made a decision to only do roles from now on that I feel that can open up this version of myself yeah yeah, because obviously, you know, as we just touched upon before, that you do, you have a kind of a calmness to you and a kind of a nice or positive outlook on life. But this character and characters, some of the characters can be uh, quite the opposite to that. Can it be quite cathartic for you? Because I guess within all of us, we do have not darker sides, but we all have kind of sides to our personality, which is sort of locked away. And I guess playing roles like this and in movies like this, you kind of get to exercise those, those sort of parts to us, I suppose. We do. I mean, drama is drama. If you're if you're if you're bringing a man to a point, you know, my my character um, is Hank. He'd lost his family, and justice hadn't greeted him. And so, you know, being a lawyer, and he, yeah, it's a harsh thing. The message, if you look deeper, is not about go against the law. It's about um, is justice working? Are the right people being given the resources to catch, or is it really just? parking tickets these days and the civilians that once were protected are we being penalized I think that probably is what's happening but I I think there is a catharsis to a degree for me it's not that I, I I agree we all have our darker sides in us I, I would suspect our darker sides have got somewhat muted recently I think they become some more introspective sometimes depressed I mean I I, I like anyone I love putting it out there and films are a great opportunity to discuss because they're emotion driven depression sadness overcoming of that being an overcomer I think I'm looking at one and you're probably looking at one as well so these characters are more a case of how do I portray something that might give a man or a woman understanding that you know this film's been made more for what it may seem the cover may not represent what it's all about but yeah it's it's a catharsis in some degrees but I'd say heavily leaning towards the challenge of trying to bring him to life more than that these days yeah, because when we did speak last, it was about the loss of justice. I just wondered if, because I mean, we it was sort of more rare to see you do comedy, but really enjoyed seeing you do that. Is it? Are you are you hoping off the back of that that you are going to try and um, maybe yeah mix between mix between the two genres more? Because it'd be good to see you do another kind of a, a character like the one in Loss of Justice, someone a bit more hapless and quite self-deprecating in a way. I am looking for roles that both you know frankly remunerate me enough to go and suffer that much. And also, so I can surrender myself to those characters. If there's physical elements needed, yeah, I can uh, fly plane, scuba dive, fight sword fight, and horse ride, and everything else. But I'd like to know that it was it was 
my suffering, which is such a weird thing for an actor to say, but it is part of the addiction. It's like, you want to know, can I bring this agony to life? And I think, uh, yeah, I'm looking for those. If I could find either comedies that were driven within life and the, and the sort of tragedy of that, and that sort of, especially those British movies that we do so well, um, or uh, uh, something that was against type where people, you know, he was, uh, you know, very nerdy and very, sort of shy and, 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 but also had a weird side to him, like facets, facets, facets of what I'm uh, looking for these days, yeah. So do, do you miss London at all? Do, do, you, ever, do you ever get find yourself thinking about London? Can I be honest? I am doing everything I can at this moment um, to find my way home again. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I, I've made a decision to spend some time. What I need to do is I need to be in my hometown for a moment to work out, you know, as, as a single man, as a, a man in, in life that I've got so much creativity, which is my priority right now, creativity and helping people, frankly. Um, and I want to do that from, the, from London. I want, to, I want to work out where my future life will be, you know. And so only last night in great detail, I was fantasizing about that very thing. Um, and I know sadness in London right now, understandably in the UK. Um, but um, yeah, I... I um, I'm looking forward to come home. I really am. Because yeah. I was wondering too about you're looking at your um, kind of schedule and the kind of things you've, you've been working on over the last few years. You do seem to be incredibly busy. Are you, are you one of those actors who just likes to move from project to, to project, just to always keep, to always remain busy and to, to, to be working? Well, you know what I always tell people, you know, <clears throat> I've got a couple of guitars right over there. I could pick up and play right now. I can pick up a handpan, I can go sing, I do what I want, write, write poems or whatever. You can only act on a set <laughs> and you can only act with other actors around, you know, and the director and, the, and all that beautiful circus that comes with that process. Um, so I think I've caught for a while the bug of needing to act, which is not always the best thing to do for one's career. <laughs> so, um, because I have so many creative outlets at this point, painting, I think, alongside music are my two, you know, head to head race right now. It'd be, it'd be a photo finish, but, um, and film to me, um, I actually, I watched this, the movie we were discussing, Hollow Point, last night. I hadn't seen it uh, for a long time. And I was wondering what it was like. And I think I, I like the new cut. I like what they've done to it. Um, but I realize acting has to be something that I, I really know why I'm there. But also, I'll be honest with you, I, I want the role to be worth me losing some of myself for the part. So then I can take time to recover and and feel and feel better for it you know feel stronger and feel um like i've achieved something for the viewer to think wow i shed some tears much needed tears because of that so that's what acting is to me now these days it's an opportunity to talk about it. like i'll look forward to speaking to you and speaking about the movie and the conversations around it are what what's been generated and i think that's exciting to me for sure yeah. I think it can take a while to, to find that kind of outlook on your career. Because I guess when you when actors start off and you start getting into kind of the arts and into the industry, people could be so driven by wanting to just um, not ex to get exposure to be in certain roles. But I guess it sounds like you've really found kind of peace of exactly what type of role you want. But I guess that can take time to kind of get to that, to get to that place. I would, I would presumptuously ask you the same question. Do you find that, you know, where you are this very moment has taken you a minute? I think life is the underscore to those answers. I think, yes, Luke, me, <laughs> the permeating energy of me and the changing shape of that energy is what my career sit on. What I have found out then during, say, the financial adjustments of this time, which, were, which are, on the face of it are not positive, I think, then the reality of changing and, and ch adjusting one's lifestyles that I myself have had to do, you, you can look at, you, you can look at things differently, I think. And for me, uh, competitiveness is a non-issue now. I don't, have a, I don't have one drip within me. I, I, I don't have the idea of a career. I don't know what, I don't know how I could cover a role or with a director. I, I want to be as wanted on the set as, I'm, as I would want to be there. And that applies to the stage, the audience. I just will take what God blesses me with. And, uh, and as long as it feels authentic creatively, and more importantly, that sits right on top of who I am and what I stand for, then I'll continue doing it. But it's, I have, um, my, I'm 52. It, it, I guess I worked this stuff out last night, you know, it, it's, you know, sarcastically said, but it, it's, it's, I'd say in the last year of this pandemic has, has really fine tuned 
uh, uh, the sides of me that I hoped I would have had time to do, so, for sure. Yeah, I, mean, I guess, I mean, obviously it's been a difficult time for so many people, but do you, have you found that kind of ability to be quite intro, um, I don't know, introspective and, and I don't know, to lots of thinking time over the last year? It sounds like you've been, that's been quite good, good for you. I think it's been good for all of us, my brother. Um, I, I didn't, I wasn't a painter a year ago. Um, and now I've got serographs being made by the guy that does Bob Dylan's art and uh, I've had a Los Angeles exhibition. <laughs> I, I have 15 new songs and which will become an album. Um, I'm going to do a hand pan album at some point, meditation. I've got a talking book that just went an audio book, Desert Conversation. I'm going to plug it, it was uh, number two for 17 minutes or something like that. <clears throat> but um, my goodness, I, I'm, I'm producing and making things that are tethered to who I am. And yes, a lot of thinking to be done. And I, and I, I you know, last time we spoke, I do think we should use this time wisely. I don't know, we've, we've met once on a Zoom call previously, but I definitely can sense that the understanding of each other gathered on that last call doesn't feel like a second phone call here. And I think that's, that could permeate, we ourselves could be example to saying, hey guys, it definitely feels better, mm. you know, letting our guard down a bit. Yeah. I, was going to, I was going to ask too because I mean you know you're someone who've got so much creative spark in you it seems you kind of always want to be busy but it, that's obviously been the case for for a long long time for you. you kind of obviously started so young I just wondered about how you now you've got the kind of benefit of hindsight looking back and dealing with the kind of level of fame that you've had to because I guess no one can prepare you for what you've that that limelight that you kind of went through in with the in the superstardom of Bros and I just wondered if if yeah sort of looking back if you have any regrets or do you look back and you've do you feel very pleased with how you handled it and how you got through what must have been actually quite a, a unique and challenging time despite all of the kind of the, the great aspects to it no I'm a great faceted question I'll try and answer it quickly um I think it's a perspective that very few people have I think it was such a unanimous global thing um exclusive Ameri of America uh, Canada yes South America yes but North America no a global phenomenon for a five-year period um I don't think I was in any area of understanding what was going on on assessment wise. Um, after that, I had a 10 or 12 years struggle finding money again, because I was so, the deal was so unfavorable that I ended up being millions and millions of dollars behind. So then what that does, I think it, it gives one an opportunity to build one's character, um, cry many tears on the shoulder of, of now my ex-wife, but dear, dear friend Shirley, um, and support with family, my brother, friends. We, I, I have this analogy. It's like, I, I have, I watched this show Forged in Fire and it was like, a, it's about building blades and things. I'm fascinated by all that because, of, but I realize there's a molecular change that goes on when you quench a blade. It literally goes from one structure and molecularly changes to a blade. It hardens and becomes a completely different thing. But imagine that, and I have a painting over here called Church, which is about that very concept. We get hammered and pounded and hit and hardened, but if we keep ourselves somewhat tethered to creativity, our truth, our love, and not really wanting to join in with the ridicule and the noise, we can find ourselves being something quite remarkable at the end of that noisy off-road, <laughs> high speed, you know, wipe out occasionally journey called life. And uh, the post result can lead, lead one to making decisions about everything. And that's not my career anymore. It's just a creative output. So uh, I think it was an absolute noise. I, was, I went through ridicule with my country. It was, then you then a lot of love there now, thank God. So really standing in this moment and then looking forward, I, I would be a fool to look upon it as anything but lessons. And I frankly, I kind of can live with myself right now. I like looking in the mirror in the sense that I don't have to look away. I'm, I, my integrity feels good. So I'm a result of that noise. So no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change any of it. And, and maybe one day over a beer or two, I'll tell you some crazy stories that you think, oh, come on, but yeah. we can do that over a beer or two. Yeah, I'd love that. Yeah, because I feel yeah, you, I feel enriched again. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. <laughs> I, 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 I realised today we share a birthday. I wonder if that's it. I wonder if there's a... September? I'm 29th of September, yeah. Do me a favour, have a look at some of, I won't go into details, but uh, type in remarkable facts about it. Look into that date. It's, and also the archangels are all on that day. It's a very, very day. So your gentle spirit, and I don't mean this about me. I mean, I am a, I'm a very caring, sensitive individual, but I'm a tough lad as well. But I, I see clearly you, you, we, we share some like-mindedness and also that, that the curiosities that are clearly revealed by your questions. I would say this, um, 
I think it's no coincidence we're born on the same day. I think I think you have a great vibe, man. And, and I'm going to be partisan to that day, so why not? <laughs> yeah. Well, when you do move, well, if you were to come back to London, we'll get that beer. That'd be great. <laughs> no, promise that, man. I, I, I definitely would love to share a beer with you, man. It'd be great. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, take care, Luke. And best of luck with the release of Follow Point. Cool. So good to see you, man. Take, see you, man. take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey!